Hello everyone, I'm Robert Evans, and today on this episode of What Lens Should I Get, we are gonna talk about the brand new Sony 20 millimeter 1.8G lens. Come along. I'm Robert Evans, and on today's episode, we are going to talk about the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8G lens on this episode of What Lens Should I Get? So, uh, first of all, uh, let me just tell you uh, a little bit about the lens. It is 13 ounces and 3.5 inches long. It takes a 67 millimeter filter. And then some of the buttons that are on the side of this lens or a lot of the ones that you find on the other lens, other lenses, but you have the focusing ring, the focus hold button, which you can program stuff to. I'm gonna show you a little demo of that in a second. The aperture ring, the focus mode switch, where you can switch it from manual to autofocus. The aperture index is just uh, showing you the uh, index of the f-stops on the lens, and then the aperture click switch. So let's go to the close-up view. Now I'm gonna show you on this is my 24 millimeter G lens, uh, but it has a lot of the same features. So this is not the 20. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little video really soon. I got to shoot that when I was in Las Vegas. So uh, here's the aperture hold button. Uh, it's where you can program uh, whatever, the focus hold button, I guess, whatever you can program what you want. Now, I like to program to this um, my, um, APS-C so I can punch in and get a little tighter. Now on a wide lens, it might not be that uh, efficient to do that. Here's the focus on and off, autofocus. Let me get my fingers out of the way. Of course, you can see the dials, uh, the f-stops. Now this is on, when I say you can click it on and off, so this is on smooth or silent. And then this button right here turns the clicks on. So if you turn that on, now you turn it and it clicks. Here, I'll put it by the mic so you can hear it. So that's what this little feature does. Um, and that's really it. So it just has some of those nice uh, basic features. I got to shoot this lens uh, in Las Vegas at WPPI just about three, four weeks ago. Uh, they announced it at WPPI. Uh, so I got the opportunity, I sort of begged and pleaded in the booth one day and let me take it out at night. So when the show closed, uh, they let me take the lens out and I went out and I shot in the streets and we shot some footage of that and some of the images that I took. Uh, so take a look, watch the video, and we'll come back. Hey everyone, it's Robert Evans, and we are here today in Las Vegas, and guess what I have? I have the brand new 20 millimeter 1.8G Sony lens. Uh, it's WPPI, so I'm here for that. They had one in the Sony booth, and I had to beg and plead to get it, but uh, they let me one have it for the night. I have to return it in the morning, but we're gonna wander around Vegas, shoot some pi Vegas pictures, uh, some night shots, some indoor shots. Uh, since we have no more light, this is what we have. But uh, come along and I'll show you what we get. All right, we are at the Bellagio Fountains just waiting for it to start. The things are coming out of the water. This is probably one of my favorite things in Las Vegas. And if you're going to shoot this, well, you definitely need a big lens. Or a wide lens, I should say. because we were gonna wait until the half hour to see if the volcano goes off. And uh, so just to kill time and to play around a little bit, I kind of thought, well, why don't we do a long exposure on the water? And there's like a beautiful crescent moon that's like just coming over the top of the hotel right now. So what I did is I'm using this rail as a way to brace myself, to brace the camera. Uh, I have it at a uh, fourth of a second at F8. And then, and this plane's gonna fly over right now, so I'm gonna try to get that in the shot too. I don't know if it's gonna fly right where I want it to. There it is, boom. Good, I snapped a few off, let me see what it looks like. Yeah, good, we have enough movement that you'll be able to see it. You can just see the crest of the moon. It's a little low, I'd rather be standing up, and if I were standing up here, then I'm gonna have to like, hand hold the camera, and it's probably gonna be too much camera shake. So, uh, that worked out good, and we're gonna wait 
another 10 minutes and see if the volcano goes off. So far, uh, we've stopped at a few places. Uh, I did a shot at, of the Wynn Hotel right as the sun was setting. It was good, but it wasn't like, I'm not super excited about it. The sky was really pretty. Uh, and then we stopped in front of the Mirage for a little bit. We were kind of waiting to see if the volcano went off uh, on the hour, but it didn't. And uh, we realized and we looked it up and uh, we had to wait an hour. So, but we did do I did some long exposures in front of the Mirage. Uh, I did some normal, uh, you know, 125th of a second, 18 in front of the Mirage. There's a little crescent moon up there. Venus is above it. So it's kind of pretty. Uh, so we're going to keep walking. We're going to keep walking around, taking some more pictures. And uh, so far, I really like this lens. It's nice and wide. It's light, which is really great. It does have the uh, manual autofocus on and off, which I love in the Sony lens because I can always keep it on continuous focus. And if I want to switch to manual and then use focus peaking to exactly dial in what I'm doing, I have the ability to do that. It does have the button control on it. So uh, a lot of times on this, I have my cameras programmed to APS-C mode, which means when I push this, it'll it'll jump it in a little bit. It'll use a, a smaller part of the sensor uh, and make it uh, not as wide. This isn't probably as applicable to a live to a wide lens, but I really like it with my telephoto lenses, especially when I'm shooting sports. But really, you can assign any custom function to this button that you want to. So anyway, let's walk around, let's see what else we can shoot. Uh, one of the things that this lens will do is shoot really close, uh, so I want to find like some macro type shots to do as well. You know, you got to think like you have this beautiful wide lens and most people don't think to use it as a close-up lens, but if you're a wedding photographer or somebody that shoots uh, weddings or anything close up, you know, I was thinking of weddings because I shoot weddings, you know, I could do maybe a ring shot with this when I wanted to show what else was around it as opposed to when you use your macro, you're just showing, you know, the rings and you don't really see much of what's around anyway. All right, we are back. And uh, so you got to see me shoot a little bit at night in Las Vegas. Uh, you, you saw we shot at the Bellagio, we shot in front of uh, the Mirage and some other things. Uh, so let me share a little bit more about the lens and I'll show you some images. Um, it has the dual X linear motor in it. Uh, which helps it focus super quietly. You can focus as close as seven inches. You saw me get really close inside the Bellagio and I'm gonna show you some of those images. Uh, it has beautiful bokeh, it has a nine blade aperture uh, so that you get that really nice bokeh and it'll stop down to F22. It's a very sharp lens as well as uh, there was very little, sometimes with wide angle lenses, uh, people will think about there's barrel distortion. I saw very little of that. Uh, it's sharp from edge to edge, really minimal vignetting. And there's a tiny bit, but I think if you took that into Lightroom and like a plus five, you could just get rid of that. Uh, so anyway, let's look at some other things. Now I did shoot all that uh, on my A7 III, just so you know which camera I was using. Here's some of the macro images that I shot. These images where I just held the camera, you kind of saw in the video closely where I uh, held the camera close and I, I pushed, you know, as close as I could to get close to these. These are decorations for Chinese New Year. Uh, here is another one. I think this is like a simulated, uh, look like incense burning. Blow it up a little bigger there so you can see that. But look at the bokeh and look at the, the beautiful depth of field in the background. Really beautiful. For a wide lens, 20 millimeters with a 1.8, that's kind of really nice. You could do some really nice close-up stuff. I kind of mentioned that in the video at weddings, like if you shoot rings or anything where you want to sort of shoot something close up in the foreground, but really sort of include what's in the background, you know, is super helpful. All right, let's go on to the next image. All right, so you also heard me talk about how I use the focus hold button to punch in a little closer closer for like my APS-C. So basically what that does is it uses a smaller part of the sensor and then you get a little more zoom out of your lens. So in this case, here's what that 20 millimeter lens looks like full. And then when I punch it in with the APS-C, I push that focus hold button. That's how I have my camera programmed. Uh, this is kind of what you get as well. So I just wanted you to see that. Here is the image that we took in front of the Mirage. This is probably like one of my favorite scenic that night. Beautiful, uh, you can see the moon above. Uh, and at the very top edge of the frame, if you can see it in the video, Venus is in there right at the top. Here's you saw me doing some long exposure. So I was using that railing 
to to hold the camera and do a longer exposure just to blur the water a little bit. You see the moon right there at the top. But uh, everything's nice and sharp. This is uh, as we got over to the Bellagio. Of course, <clears throat> Paris is right across the street. And uh, I, did, I did this. So I uh, just wanted to see, again, shoot some vertical images. Notice that uh, the Eiffel Tower is nice and sharp. And then the, the trees in the foreground are uh, nicely soft. I really thought this image was fun. This is how you can really see, you know, the, the sharpness, even like look at the edges. And the other thing that I'll do is these images will be put on an online gallery so you can go in and view them yourself. You can look at all the XF data. So look for that link in the show notes just below the video. Here's the fountains at Bellagio. So uh, we were kind of like packed in there. There were quite a few people there at the time. It's almost impossible to get the whole entire fountain in there from the street level. Uh, if you were, uh, I've stayed in the rooms there before. And so if you're up above looking down, you can see the whole fountain or if you're further back. Uh, but I wanted to at least include the whole hotel in there. Uh, so you can kind of see that. Uh, here is a kind of fun little candid that I took. We were walking across one of the bridges. Uh, I just liked this guy sitting there in his, uh, I don't know, it's like a unitricycle. It looks like a unicycle seat, and but it then has like tricycle wheels on it. So anyway, I thought that was just kind of cool. Here's New York, New York, and everything's nice and clear except for the roller coaster, right? You know, the roller coaster, they were moving. It was going, I'll show it to you again, bigger. Um, but everything's super sharp. And then this was my favorite image. Uh, the police officers, they had pulled someone over uh, and I just walked up and <laughs> could I shoot a portrait of you? And so he agreed and said, sure. And so I shot a few portraits of him sitting there. I really like how you can see uh, his partner in the background and it says police and you have the red and the blue light in it. Um, but, you know, of course you know that they're police officers uh, but overall, I was really happy with this lens. Uh, it was light. I, I just really enjoyed shooting it. I could, I could totally see adding this to my bag. I do a little bit of landscape on my own. Um, I could use it at weddings, although I really have been liking my 24-1-4. Um, but this is a much better price point. Uh, so anybody looking for a nice wide lens at a fairly reasonable price point, I think this is a good one. So let's jump back in give you a few more pointers about the lens. You know, basically I was kind of talking about who is this for? Well, if you're any need for a wide angle photography, if you do landscape, astro, video, this lens would be perfect uh, for video uh, on a gimbal. So if you're like holding your gimbal and you need a nice light lens so you can be able to balance that, I think it's perfect for that. It's, it's great for low light, of course, if you need wide with low light. That's why it works kind of well in Astro. Uh, the bokeh is beautiful, the sharpness from edge to edge. And, and really, you know, I think if you're looking for a crisp wide angle lens that delivers excellent quality and that's lightweight and durable, this isn't too overly priced and at $8.95, this is a really great choice. So that's it on this episode of What Lens Should I Get? I hope that was helpful and gave you a little insight uh, into that lens. Of course, you can do your own research online as well. Um, if you like this show, please give us a like. If you loved it, please follow us. Of course, you can find us on all of our other uh, places uh, on Instagram at The Pixel Show. Uh, we have a Facebook group, The Pixel Show, and on Twitter at The Pixel Show YT. And of course, you're here on YouTube at The Pixel Show YT. I'm your host, Robert Evans, and thank you for watching The Pixel Show. Mm -hmm.